as an optometrist, we deal with many diseases that are autoimmune. Yes. Many autoimmune diseases affect the eye. And I work with functional medicine doctors locally to try to get our patients better. Yes. Can you talk about the microbiome and how it relates to autoimmune disease and how can we help our patients with autoimmune disease that may have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or myasthenia or some type of autoimmune problem? Well, so with the microbiome, again, that is critically important. And because of the toxicities that we are you know, faced with, the onslaught from our diet, from our water, from our air, and so forth, it is greatly reducing um, the good bacteria in our gut. Also, uh, um, people also are exposed to various antibiotics, with, whether they are prescribed them from their you know, doctors for various syndromes. But more importantly, we are daily getting a significant dose of antibiotics through our food supply and water supply. So this is kind of a continuous thing and it is slowly decimating our microbiome. And of course, when you take a traditional antibiotic, say a seven day course of whatever it is, um, Keflex or what have you, um, it significantly affects the microbiome and, and pretty much decimates it for a time until it can be rebuilt uh, again. But um, having that situation, you know, we need our gut bacteria to, you know, make hormones, you know, to provide, you know, the communication to our brain. Uh, a lot of our, you know, um, thyroid conversion process actually happens in the gut. Um, the vast amount of serotonin is actually made in the gut. So, um, so that obviously is all, you know, uh, coincident with various disease syndromes when that is in disarray. Um, and some of the other things that are really causing poor gut health, um, let's take our food supply and, and let's take wheat, you know, um, where most people have heard of the problem with gluten. Um, and, and really, uh, there's a tremendous amount of data that show uh, that is showing that gluten is inflammatory to the gut and causes leaky gut syndrome, or the traditional medical term is uh, hyperpermeability syndrome, and and that is coming from two aspects. One, the wheat supply of today is totally different from 50 years ago, uh, due to hybridization and, and so forth to make the plant grow faster. Um, that gluten content has increased by about 50 times. So, and our bodies really aren't designed to adequately uh, uh, digest gluten. And so it ultimately becomes kind of a toxin to the body. Um, the other thing that we have to uh, look at is the widespread use of glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. And really that ultimately is a, is a pesticide or an antibiotic, right? But it's widely used um, you know, to kill off weeds and so forth. Um, but it's also just globally sprayed on um, you know, the wheat plants. And as, as a matter of fact, a whole host of plants, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables um, for uh, its various effects at controlling weeds. And, and in the wheat industry as a desiccant to um, enhance the harvest and, and make it uh, a much faster process. But that um, has become quite a, a, a problem with the health of our gut microbiome and, and all of the functions in our body. So, um, so those are some of the things from a, you know, the standpoint of how can we um, communicate to our patients uh, what's a better diet? Obviously, eat as organic as possible. Um, another aspect is genetically modified foods. Um, so, yes, there are some benefits of genetically modified um, things in our in our society. However, um, uh, the genetically modified foods um, in the um, the soy. Um, and grain and, and so forth, uh, milieu have become 
uh, quite problematic. Uh, corn is at the highest level of genetic uh, modification. So corn and soy being uh, one of the staples in our diet is also causing um, decimation of our microbiome. So, you know, I say to my patients, um, definitely have a more organic diet, avoid a GMOs, and um, really pay attention to what you're putting in your mouth. Um, gluten, for the vast majority of people, is actually a problem, but they just don't know it. Um, so doing um, uh, testing for gluten sensitivity, I think, is very, very important, especially if someone is suffering from any type of disease syndrome. Um, and doing a gluten test from, say, the big box labs from LabCorp or Quest is generally quite inadequate because it only tests for one type of gliadin. It's called alpha gliadin, but there are many subtypes of gliadin, uh, omega, uh, gamma, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are labs that can test um, at a higher accuracy rate um, to you know, ascertain whether you truly are gluten sensitive or not. And but short of that, you know, even without doing testing, again, if someone is suffering from any type of issue, um, autoimmune or, or what have you, um, do a trial of staying away from gluten um, and, and dairy for that matter, because uh, kind of same thing for traditional um, dairy farms, uh, the, the milk um, is, uh, there's genetic modification in that and hybridization, hormones and so forth. And again, from the 50 years ago, it's the casein, um, which is the protein component of the milk has also been implicated in causing, you know, autoimmune issues, gut, leaky gut issues and, and so forth. So, um, so, you know, from a, a standpoint, again, going back to, the, the patients, eat as organic as possible, stay away from packaged foods. Um, if you cannot pronounce what the ingredients are on the package, um, it's ideal to kind of stay away from that. And, um, and ideally, don't consume packaged foods at all. You know, eat live foods in their organic form, and that would go a tremendously long way in helping someone's health.